Well, hi everybody. It has not been my day, my week, my month, or even my year, and I absolutely hate friends, so that is what I'm talking about. I have not made my video about my ankle rehab, and I broke it, tore ligaments, and tore the muscle belly, whatever the heck a muscle belly in your ankle is. Um, back in September, and it is now, it's just gone March. So it's probably time that I gather my things. Um, I filmed a lot of clips while I was rehabbing the ankle, but I also was really worse for wear because not only do I have my normal health stuff from having Ella's Danlos, but I also had the pain constantly of a really messed up ankle. And as it is at this point, it is still really obviously messed up. Um, but I'm skating, I've been skating for many months back on it now, um, and so I thought I'd talk about exactly what I did after smashing up, essentially. In, in, a, in a light term, I didn't actually break that many bones, broke one bone in there, but really smashing the contents in my ankle, not the bones. I'm talking about the ligaments and everything that sort of holds it together. So. First off, I think I'll just explain the injury that I did. I will show you an x-ray. This is not my x-ray because, wouldn't you have it, I don't like sharing my personal medical file on the internet because that would make me a weirdo and I don't care if you don't believe me, so I don't need to do it. <laughs> but anyway, I broke the medial malleolus, which I had no idea what the heck that was, so I had to look it up and I will show you an x-ray of where that bone is. But it's essentially this knobbly sucker on the inside of your ankle, which is absolutely hilarious because most of the damage that I did was on the outside of my ankle. So the bone part of this injury was the least bad. Like it was so much of a non-issue. Um, it healed itself, didn't need surgery. The bit that's bad is there's three ligaments on this outside of the ankle and I did a full rupture of those and then there's one massive big sucker that runs along where that medial malleolus is and I almost completely ruptured it. It was the, I think they say grade three tear or something, four is like as bad as it gets. So I blew all the stability out off both sides of my ankle and it swelled up like a mother. Um, so initially when I did it, it was dislocated and off to the side. If you want to see some of the videos from when it was first done, I have got um, a video about that already up. So just have a little look in my playlist and you will find the video. It still hurts. Um, I will show you a photo of it side by side with my good ankle. <laughs> Uma, no! The dogs, they miss me when I'm gone. I've shut the door because Ladybug, Miraculous Ladybug, is blasting on the TV out there. So I've shut the door, but there is a puppy that loves me so much, doesn't like to be left alone. Anyway, so a photo of my ankles side by side. So you can see. The left is my ankle now, and the right is my good ankle. And I will talk about what I did. So I got some wacky advice and this video is not here to be advice on how to fix your ankle because my situation is really unique. Um, so I actually got put straight into, <coughs> rude. <laughs> I got put straight into a study um, at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. So that's where the big fracture clinic is. Um, so they put me in a study about like tracking the recovery of these types of injuries long term and they specifically wanted my details as a person with Ehlers-Danlos so that they could see how the recovery is different for people with Ehlers-Danlos. Um, so my connective tissue being too loose, they actually said scar that ankle up. So the advice they gave me it, where most people they're like stay off it for three months, don't wait there. They were like 
We're going to tell you the opposite. You can make it bleed in there as much as possible because there was a big bleed on MRI. They could see massive bleeding. I uh, had an MRI like 10 days or something after the injury and it was still actively bleeding. So it was a mess. But um, they said, make it bleed, make it scar. You want as much scar tissue in there as possible because your good ankle will end up more loose than your damaged one. Whereas if you stay off this, you're gonna have no stability whatsoever. So what they were kind of trying to imply is that the scar tissue will act as stability for my ankle. Um, and I think they've been right. The only thing I don't like about it is it's still epically painful every day. Um, and it's very easy to re-roll it and feel like a tearing sensation and then go through um, feeling like it's beginning all over again. So that sucks, it's a little bit slow. Um, so how did I keep on it in ways that are gentle? So they said, there's no way to tell me when is safe to do it because it's not about being safe. What they said was, as soon as you can bear weight, as in as soon as I could cope with the pain of putting weight on it, do it. So I started off initially in the shower and I would stand on one leg, uh, on my good leg, and I would gently place a little bit of weight on the sore one over and over again while I had that warm water of the shower going and a distraction in my mind singing a little happy song and just kind of gently going nah, 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 it hurts, nah, 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 it hurts, nah, 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 and just slowly gently bit by bit putting a little bit of weight on it then as I could you know I would try with my crutches to walk through on each step just a little bit more weight walking around the house with crutches and then um, as time went on, it was movement exercises and some various ones the physio gave me, um, including things like pressing my knee up against the wall. Um, uh, my foot, my toes up against the wall and trying to touch my knee to the wall, which at first I couldn't do it at all, I was like this far from the wall, but by doing it every day, several times a day, it was this, then this, then this, and eventually I was touching, and now I actually have quite good range. So, puppies. Um, so yeah, I can get my knee over my toes again, which is huge because there was every chance that that wouldn't happen, but I've been stretching and constantly moving. The other good thing I did is I went straight out and bought some balance items. So one of them is called a BOSU ball. Okay, boop, this just arrived. Let me see in the box, it's been here for five seconds. I'm gonna cut it open. In a minute, I'm gonna cut the box open. And try not to break my ankle. Ooh, Jesus. Nearly squashed a puppy. We've got pulley things, pumpy things. We got from Kmart Australia, $49, I think it was, a Bosu ball balance trainer. And it can be used the flat side with that round side down, gotta pump this up obviously. Um, or it can be used that way for balance activities and you can attach some uh, pulleys onto the sides for upper body, so I'm going to do that. It took me a minute. Well, it would help if there wasn't a kink in the. Is that letting air out? Oh, it's very cheap pump. I have a proper pump, but I'm just being lazy, getting the proper pump out of the cupboard. This is working quite fast, actually. And I don't want it to be too firm because I want it to have some play in it. There's some little bits there to be able to let a bit of air back out as well. Oh, that's pretty good. Woohoo! Let's see. I won't be able to plug it. Okay, okay, okay. That was amusing. Take two. Okay, so I thought these were just to let air out, but they're actually the plug, and that's why there's two of them because. I know I'm gonna lose one of these. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Ready to rock and roll. Put this 
I won't use it. I'll shove it in there. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to add more air. I also bought just like a kitty's therapy cushion. I'll grab it. Hang on. Okay, I probably should have started with these here, but my BOSU and my therapy cushion, which I have quite flat, uh, flat as in not inflated. And so this was living in the middle of the living room floor. And every single time I had to go past it, I would stand on it. One foot stand with my bad ankle for as long as I could. And I also worked my good ankle, which I fast learned is bad. <laughs> So I've since continued the therapy with both these items on both legs and my skating has gone so much better. Like all my stability issues that I hadn't really honed in on that I thought were just me not being skilled enough yet, I'm sure will be was more my hypermobility in my ankles, not allowing me to really sort of be out of balance and off center in these various ways without sort of thinking, oh no, I'm falling and just throwing myself on my derriere. So in a way, it's been a blessing, dare I say it. Actually, smashing my ankle up like that was wonderful for my skating because even though my ankle is sore every day, I have learnt techniques and tricks now. I'm more stable than ever, I'm able to do a lot of one foot movements that I couldn't do before and ultimately it's made me a better skater. Um, yeah, so that is essentially the shortened version of how I've rehabbed my ankle. The other thing I've got to mention is it puffs up all the time still. When it does, Uma, go away. When it does, I ice it. After skating, still, I go home and ice it. Um, she's having a tantrum because I've shut her out of the room. She's the most needy puppy, this one. Like, seriously. Um, so yeah. Or, uh, excuse you. No, we're not doing this. Do you want to come? Do you want to come join me? Come on, you come join me. You'll see it's boring. Come on. There's nothing fun for you in here. There's nothing fun. What's mum doing? Nothing fun. Okay. Um, so swimming pool and then hot water. So like cold water, hot water, um, alternating. So dipping my foot in, yeah, in like cold water for as long as I can doing a, I did a bucket of iced water and then a bucket of warm water. And that was pretty cool as well. Um, so yeah, stuff, stuff like that. The physio told me this is the biggest puppy on the face of the earth. Seriously. Well, not seriously. I know there's a lot of dogs that are a lot bigger, but she is huge. She is huge, huge. She reminds me of, did you ever see that um, kids show Bear in the Big Blue House? She's got the personality of Bear in the Big Blue House as well. But who? What do I smell? <laughs> That's you. That's you. All right. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and um, I will also leave you with some quick clips of me redoing a set of old roller skates that were over 10 years old. So to keep myself busy while I was stuck on my butt so much in the initial healing time, I bought myself a high ankle boot that I could go back to skating in so that I wouldn't risk such an injury because my injury happened in a low ankle boot. And the boot was over 10 years old, absolutely beat up really bad. And I really love doing up old skates. So. I bought all the stuff I need and you can have a little look at my roller skate reno. And I've finally done this video and talked about my ankle rehab. So I'm getting out of here. I've got dogs that need me. <laughs> See ya. Okay, so this is a 10 year old antic AR1 full leather boot in very rough condition before I have cleaned and stripped the colors back off them in preparation for paint. Just FYI, it can be a bit scary when you're painting this on. It can look very much like it's not going to blend, but as it dries, it sinks in and it blends. So that's one spot immediately after being hit with the paint. It looks like it's been painted by a preschooler. You can see all the brush strokes, but I'll give it a little bit to dry and come back. 
Also, don't worry about the eyelets. Um, the paint from the eyelets will easily be cleaned off afterwards. Okay, so about less than five minutes later, it's not fully dry, but you can see it evens itself out. I've gone ahead and done the tongue and there's some areas there, especially just here, that I'm going over a bit heavier because it's very soiled. So that's still wet and patchy. It will dry and even out. And that will keep evening out as it continues to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the boot. This is just a side-by-side -side picture of the two boots after one coat of paint. And this is the finished result after some leather care and the painting finished and then the end result mounted. And this is your closing reminder, never to take yourself too seriously. Nothing in life is ever that serious. Keep laughing.